Hello there, I'm John and welcome to another live art tutorial from Shopkeep Arty, bringing you amazing and varied artists from around the world to inspire, educate and entertain you. Today we're going to be travelling to Cambridgeshire in England where we're going to be joining an urban sketcher, Jeff Carter, to take an ordinary looking house and bring it to life on paper. Uh, before we journey there, first a quick shout out and thanks to our most recent patrons Francisca and Jean for joining our community so thank you so much for supporting us and as one of our patrons you'll now get automatic invites to join these live shows throughout the month. Uh, we've got a fantastic June out of interest uh, lined up so do visit our live events page on our website to find out what's coming up. These short classes are a prelude to Jeff's longer two to three hour workshop webinar uh, that we'll be hosting in a few weeks time. And it gives you a taster of some of the things that Jeff will be exploring in greater depth at the full event. Uh, you'll also have the opportunity of entering a competition to have Jeff sketch your own house. Uh, more on that later. Although you can just watch today, I highly recommend speed painting along as it's the best way to learn and you can think of the right questions to ask as you're doing it. Uh, it can feel fast and furious, but it's good fun. Um, so without further ado, let's zoom to Jeff now. As we journey to England, you can find any reference photos, recommended art materials on our website. There's also a link in the description below. Uh, simply visit our video library and click on class info. Now, as we get a little bit lower, see it's a gloriously sunny weather. This is live. Um, I can, I think I can see Jeff there. Yes, he's popping back into his studio. Hello, Jeff, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you, John. Yeah, great. And it's fantastic to be hosting you. This is, a, this is our first time hosting you. And urban sketching, it's been quite a bit of time since we host, hosted an urban sketcher and I just love the technique and everything. What first attracted you to this this area of art? I, I just like the immediacy of it. You know, there's nothing better than, than um, sitting outside with a cup of coffee, you know, and just looking at something and just capturing it and just feeling the whole experience. It's not just the picture, it's the whole experience of, of bringing it to life in your own style, you know? I mean, all of us will we'll, we'll, we'll look at what we've got in front of us, but we'll all interpret it a slightly different way. And it's that that I really enjoy. Yeah, no, it, it is really nice. Well, I really can't wait to get cracking today. But uh, before we do, a quick 30 second word on how today's live event's going to work. So first of all, we'll walk through how Jeff looks at a building and we'll make a start on uh, his sketch. And if you want to use a photo of your own house rather than the reference photo, you're more than welcome to do so. Then we'll take a pause and we'll use that uh, to have a look at some of Jeff's previous works of art uh, for a little bit of inspiration and it satis satisfies the nosy side of my personality um, <laughs> as, as, as well as talk about what we're going to be doing in the upcoming two to three hour workshop webinar as well. And then finally, we'll complete the tutorial after which you're more than welcome to share what you've done on our Facebook page for comments and feedback. Um, one of these shared sketches will then win their own signed sketch of their house from Jeff. And I'll explain the, the, the rules or terms and conditions uh, a little bit later uh, towards the end of the show. Um, and don't forget, if you like what you create today and have a shop on our art platform, we can help you launch a variety of items using that art. So do get in touch with us. With that said, let's now go back to Jeff and we'll start putting pen to paper. Jeff, back with you. OK, thanks, John. Um, well, hi. So hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I mean, one of the things about sketching outside, of course, is just, as I said to you, just the enjoyment of, of bringing things to life that you see in front of you. But when it comes to if you want to sketch your, your, your house or your friend's house, or as I do, quite a lot of um, house portraits, then you, you don't normally have a, a, a great reference. Um, so you're generally working off a photograph, which is what we're going to do today. So I think what I'll do is I'll, we'll start off straight away and then we'll we'll kind of chat through what I'm doing as we go as we go through. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this house and it's very much like the kind of pictures that you might get if someone asks you to 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 sketch the house for them. Very little light, you know, no no real no real um, brightness in the picture. There's no shadow. So, so as a as a portrait artist, one of the things that you well a house portrait artist, one of the things you you do learn 
and the skills that I want to try and share with you in the, in the longer class is, is how to bring these things to life by, by changing the season, to make them brighter, to, you know, sometimes you get a picture in the winter that you, you then want to paint in the summer, you know, all these kind of things we can, we can bring into our sketch. Um, so this looks like a fairly straightforward house. Um, it, it, it's, it's sandwiched by two quite modern properties, but this one's well over 100 years old. Um, so I'm going to make a start and we'll start to, we'll start to, we're, we're going to chat through as we go. So first thing I've got is I'm going to be using um, this kind of, I think it's about a nine by 12 sheet. It's uh, cold pressed, not paper. Um, I'm going to be sketching with a pencil initially. And normally I, I start with a very light pencil, like a 2H or 3H, but you won't really see that in, in the picture today. So I'll be using this kind of deeper HB pencil. Um, and then if you've got a, a fine liner or, or some kind of pen with you as well, then, then that's what you need. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to, we're just going to, create a, a simple sketch of this house that uh, that's going to bring trying to bring the character of the property out try to try to make it look uh, well it's already a beautiful house but how do we really bring it to life um and one of the things i'm going to do is i'm you might have noticed is i'm actually starting with my my pad in a portrait mode um nothing really fancy about that i'm not trying to trying to be clever or anything i'm just looking at the, this beautiful house i've got this um this fence at the bottom here going all the way up through this lovely double facade to these big chimneys, which I really like because they, they bring out the character of the house. So I think if I do that in a portrait mode, I'm going to make it look um, much more taller and elegant. And and um, you'll, you'll notice if you've seen any of my work on Instagram, you'll see that I, I'm quite comfortable in changing the shape of things, but trying to retain the character and the integrity of the, of the property. So let's let's carry on. If you can see that there, you can see me sketching that. Um, yeah, we can. Uh, Carl, that, Carl said, um, "Why do my sketching pencils seem to multiply like rabbits?" <laughs> 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 so he's obviously got quite a few that he's managed to dig out for today. Yeah. Um, but yes, I know they're a bit like big biros. If uh, anybody's got those, that, that does the same thing for me. Um, it's amazing. Like, it's, not, it's normally just about now that the pen I pick up is the one that dries up and doesn't work. But we'll we'll, we'll hope that. Won't happen. Yeah. So okay, get, get get your pen and paper. If you want to, if you want to do the same as me and go and go portrait, then do that as well. If you want to go landscape and keep put your paper the other way, fine as well. Um, so let's let's just make a start. I'm, I'm going to just um, I'm going to just draw a very simple box, and all I'm doing is I'm representing the house. So I, I, all I'm doing now is I'm just representing this big shape here, um, leaving myself enough room to put those lovely big chimneys on. And you can see this is quite a, quite a messy stage because I'm really just getting some shape on. All this will get rubbed out later. I, I'm going to give myself a line here, which represents the line across the roof, and a line here, which gives me this extra facade, and a line here where the property comes to an end before the fence kind of comes in around here. Now, the one thing to remember, of course, is, is when, you're, when you're working from a photograph, you, you may not want to take a picture. You may not want to, to, to draw your picture from exactly the spot that the photograph's taken. And that, that's one thing we can, we can always do. We can always change the angle. And I'm doing that all of the time where I, I'm given a photograph, which is, which is a, 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 an acute angle. And I think I prefer the picture in a different way or, or I want to convey it in a different way. So that's something that I'm quite familiar with and, and we, we do an awful lot. Um, I'm going to have these lovely big chimneys, which, which come up here. Um, in fact, let's give them even more height than they've really got in real life, but that just gives it a bit of emphasis. So I'll just put that there. I'll put the other one in here somewhere. I'm all the time looking to get these lines using just a, just a gauge to try and get these, these straight. Okay, just, just really roughly sketch it. Just, just have fun, just play with it. Um, and then we have a roof line that comes across between those two. Our roof will come out here, something like that. Um, and all the time I'm playing with these lines just to just just to to keep moving them around because once I put the pen on, I can take all these lines off and I'll just be left with with what's left. Um, the house comes down here like that. Now we've got some. Oops, I keep knocking this this reference photo. I'm sorry about that. No, that's so, okay. I guess, we'll I guess my first my first takeaway from this initial stage, Jeff, is the fact that the the proportions of what you're doing and the uh, you know the uh, perspective and everything like that is slightly distorted and or quite majorly distorted, I guess, because actually you look at that photo of the house and it's sort of wider than it is tall almost. But you're obviously doing it 
taller than it is wide, for example. Um, so you're using the, the photo to inspire you about, about pulling out some of the character of the house, but you're not doing a carbon copy of it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to emphasise what where the, where the main character of this house sits. Um, I, if you look at my work, I, I don't do a... I don't do a photographic reference of a of a house. I, I try to I try to look at it and I try to think, you know, what what what's it what's it saying? What what's it what 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 does it what does it kind of convey? Um, and what, what I really like is is when people when people send me a photo and say, look, would you would you paint my house or would you do this? What's really nice is the conversation you have because because people will will say, well, you know, we've lived in this house for so long, or we've or, or this is the history of the house. Um, and it really does help to kind of shape the way in which you might you might draw the house. And what, what I'm doing at the moment is very much what I would send to someone um, and say, this is my version of what I think your house looks like. You know, is it OK? And, and then we kind of work from there. So we start with this kind of draft sketch and, and together we kind of build up what it is that, that people are looking for in the, in the, in the portrait of their property. And let's be fair, they're going to put it on their wall and it's going to hang there for quite a long time. So. You know, I want to do everything I can to try and get it right. Um, so I'm just, we've got these big bushes in the front here, which I really like, and I need to put those in quite soon because they're going to come in front of things. So we'll put those in there. And we'll put those in there like that. Fence is going to go here. Now, just just to pause for a second, I don't know whether what you can see is, is by, by using the paper this way, we're, we're emphasizing that the houses, the, 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 the height of the house, and we're giving it some real, some real um, lift and some dimension. Lots of things we can do to emphasize that even further. And, at the, and, and on the class, we'll be talking about how we use color to really start to, to emphasize these things. Um, you can see I've just taken a, a light view of the windows where everything is. Same thing here, got a window here. And of course, whilst I'm using this pencil, I'm able to just make any changes I want, look at things, stand back, have a quick look at things, see if they're going in the direction I want them to go. If not, we can, we can change them. And whenever I get a house, port a house portrait request, I, I always tend to start with something that's actually quite, quite, um, quite, quite a close rep rep representation of the house. And more often than not, people will say to me, but can you give it, you know, a bit of extra this or a bit of extra that to, to kind of make it look a bit more characterful. So I, I've changed my, my view on things now and I, I, um, I just paint it or, or sketch it the way I think I would normally sketch it. And then, and then we work from there. And I've had some wonderful conversations with people about, you know, the, how they want their house to be, to be drawn. Um, so there we go. I mean, that's just a very, very quick view of, of what the house looks like. Um, I'm not going to put too much more detail in there um, because I'm going to do the rest in pen. So if you've if you've got something like that, then great, you know, just come, come along with me. I'll just talk for a second, just allow you to to kind of catch up. But that's about as much as I would normally do at the start. Um, and then then I can come onto the pen. So if you've got one of these sort of fine liner pens, great, pick it up, and we'll 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 start from there. Um, today I'm going to be using this this fountain pen, which um, no, real, you know, just it's slightly different. It just gives me a different view. I love the feel of a fountain pen on paper. It, it's for something, for some reason, it, it gives me a bit of a buzz, but I can't explain that for any more than it's just quite exciting. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work with the lines, but I'm going to give it a bit more detail now. So you can see in the in the photo, there's a lot more detail in here than I've captured in this original original sketch. Um, and so let's let's start to to put these lines in for the for the chimneys, um, all the time emphasizing things, exaggerating things a little bit where you feel that they can be exaggerated, um, keeping the, the sketch really loose and, and fluid. You know, I'm not, I'm not after something which is, which is too restrictive. Um, the beauty about sketching, of course, is, is that you can just, just play with, with pens and, and just allow things to just flow. Um, and when I show you some of my work, the difference between studio work versus work on, you know, on location or plein air is, is so different. Um, and and I'll, I'll try to demonstrate it to you later. And, and, uh, 
and you can see just how, how different they are. Just very, very lightly putting in these, these some of these details on the chimney. Um, it's got this, this fancy, fancy brickwork there, which I really like. So we'll, we'll just add that in. And then we'll just put that, that in like that. Now my sketches are quite loose. I mean, if, if I'm in the studio, they're going to be they're going to be much, much, much tighter, much more rigid. But um, it, one of the things I enjoy is is the fact that with urban sketching, um, when you're outside and you're sketching, you're sketching quite quickly. You, you do get a certain a certain feeling of of urgency, and 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 um, that finds its way into your sketch. You know, the fun of the fun of what you you do comes through. And so you, I guess I've probably picked up these tips over the years as to how to how to kind of bring some of these loose loose um, loose techniques into my painting. So I'll just put in the roof there. I'm just coming down here. I'm not too worried about straight lines. Um, in fact, sometimes I go very wild with my lines, but uh, I much prefer to freestyle. So, so my view of this is 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 not to pull out a a ruler and start to measure distances between objects you know, I'm very much I very much just want to freestyle and and get a feel for the property rather than rather than a lot, uh, spend a lot of time on on um, trying to get it absolutely right. Karen's so, asked what sort of nib would you use on a, a fountain pen? This one is an extra fine nib um, and it's a really good question because of course the the, the um, beauty of of these fine liners is that you can you, you, you can emphasize things. So, so a, very, a very fine nib is going to make things look further away. If you then use a much thicker, a thicker pen, it's going, you're going to get this difference between the two, the two, um, the two lines, which, which you can really use to your, your, your own effect to create something which is really nice. Okay, so there we go. I've got, um, now, when it comes to these windows, I always tend to listen to the sound that I'm creating because that, that helps me to get something similar in shape. A windowsill there. Now you can see that what, what I've actually done is versus the, the reference photo, I, I'm coming at the house from a slightly different perspective to that. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a very, very close eye on the, the, what's in the house, but at the same time, I'm conveying it in a slightly different way or actually quite a significantly different way. Depends how you look at it. But this is this is what I really love about this 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 kind of approach because it's it's very relaxing, you know. It's it's very it's 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 just very calm, you know. I, I would normally be if I was sitting here in my studio, I would be listening to some kind of dreadful music, probably, um, which would just enable me to to just work along with the music. But because when you're outside, you, you have the whole noise of the of everything that's going on around you. And it just gives you gives, gives you something to really capture in your in your sketches. So we've got this big sort of roof here, like that. I mean, even the roof line at the top, you've you've got that slight curve and a bit bit of distorted you know which brings character doesn't it to the to the sketch it does um, and carl says those straight lines are a habit and a curse for me who was trained as an architect and a draftsman keep those rulers <laughs> and straight edges away from me when sketching yeah i know what you mean carl. yeah no I, I know exactly what you mean carl it's um it's something that um that it, I, I i got to the point where i was worrying so much about straight lines that it started to affect how much i was, I was enjoying the process and for me the most important thing is about enjoying it, and and so if I can just freestyle and just play with with lines, and get them and get them to something which you know I, th I think is 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 kind of right, then you'll be surprised how the energy that I'm trying to convey in my drawing by playing with these lines comes through in the way in which you then see the, the finished picture. I hope you know. I hope we we get to see that. Um, now I'm going to put these. I'm going to put these big bushes in because I, I don't want to take the risk 
of having to run a straight line through a bush because that always looks a little messy. So foliage is something that tends to go in quite quite early on. And again, nothing nothing fancy, you know, just just allow you allow the pen just to find its way around and it'll find its own way, you know, it'll do a lot of the work for you. You get different reactions actually when you're outside sketching. You get such different reactions from, you know, if you're sketching a, a scene that includes someone's house and they, they notice that. Um, some people very, very quickly close their door <laughs> and other people come out and you have a nice chat with them, you know, and you, you, um, you talk to them about what you're doing and, and you, you get to know them and you get to know their house and how long they've lived there and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it, it, it's, really, it's really nice. And of course, this is something I was talking to John about yesterday. The, the urban sketching community is, is such, a, such a nice part of what you get with, with art because so many people on social media uh, um, kind of do a similar thing. And you, everyone does it in a slightly different way. And it's a lovely, lovely to see different people's different interpretations of, of buildings. So right, here we go. But that, that was really quick, wasn't it? I mean, he, we, we've just got this coming down here. I think the house ends about there. You take that line straight across, but this facade comes out a bit further forward. Um, and we've got this fence. Now you can see I've deliberately, deliberately stretched the way I'm looking at this so that I get this lovely fence in here. Because look at the people, when the people built this garden, they put this lovely fence in. And so you, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna draw that fence, this house without that lovely fence. You're not gonna draw it without these lovely, these lovely kind of palm tree type bushes. And, and I'm sure there's 50 people on, on the call that tell me they're not palm trees, but, um, but you're, gonna, you're gonna need to include those things in it. Um, but then there's other things you might not want to include, but it's, it's, all, it's all down to your own choice. So let's just go with this fence here. There's kind of a post that sits there like that. And another one that sits there like that. Right, there we go. So I hope you're sketching along and I hope you're, you're able to follow this. I'm being quite, uh, it's, it's inevitable that, that we've done it quite quickly. So, you know, don't worry if you're, if you're running behind where, where I'm at because you can easily catch up later on. I'm just putting some posts in here. Now, what I was saying earlier is, is um, you know, quite often, if, if you're asked to paint, paint a house, the request can come from like a friend and they don't want the people whose house you're painting to know that you're painting it. Um, and that can, you know, catch you out because you, your photos may not be the best quality in the world, but you, you need to work with those photos to create something that the owner of that house is gonna love. Um, and so, that's something that um, we will look at in the longer class. In the longer class, you know, how do you how do you take a photo reference and turn it into something that's got full of light and shadow, and and you've got to change the colour to reflect the brickwork when it when the sun hits it. You know, all these different things we'll we'll kind of discuss and talk about. And there's there's lots of simple simple tricks that I can share with you in how to in how to do all that kind of thing. And, and let's not, you know, don't think it's just a house. You know, imagine it's your local coffee shop or, or your local pub. Um, I ran a course a little while ago in Cambridge and people brought along their own pictures and, and one person brought along a picture of a, of a pub and said, it's my local and I, I'm hoping that I'm going to sketch it and I'm going to take it in and they're going to give me a free beer, you know, when I, <laughs> when I give them the sketch. You know, there's lots of different motivations. Now there's an have. idea, yes. <laughs> there's an idea. Okay. So well, that, that's, that's yeah, that was obviously a very important bit putting that fence in front because it really brings it to life, doesn't it? it almost creates that sort of three-dimensional effect nice. as yeah. well. Yeah, that's great. Let, let me just rub these lines out, John, so that you can people can see slightly. I mean, I don't normally have these lines because I use a much lighter pencil that I just leave the lines on because they're hardly there. But with these pencils to show on the screen, it leaves a bit of a darker mark. So there you go. Look. So that's really quick, but I hope what it what it does is it is it just 
we can do a, a bit more to this, of course, but um, let's you see just the, the, the basic shape of what we're working with. And now we start to we start to refine exactly what it looks like. Well, before we do that, should we stop for this little pause in the middle of the, the show? And sure. um, I think it's been been great to get that first bit done. And doesn't it look amazing? It looks really, uh, really great. And it would be fascinating to see how you've done it at home as well. But now we're just going to take a, a pause in the middle. And um, I'm just reading what Susie said. Susie said, if you are just out and about, do you have to ask the owner's permission? So that's an interesting question. What What do you... How, how do you how do you do that? Because I guess, you know, if you were a metal detector person and you're in a farmer's field, you're having to ask if you're drawing or, or painting somebody's house. Do you do you find do you find yourself asking their permission when you're there on site? Uh, yeah, well, generally I do. I mean, because I'm, 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 if I'm painting a scene, then then that house might be part of the scene. But yeah, yeah I, I will regularly knock on someone's door and say, I, I'm a local sketcher. I'm just outside sketching. You've got a beautiful house. I'd, I'd love to just sit and draw it. You know, do you mind? And I've never met, found someone that said no. <laughs> um, and, and quite often, you know, I'll come out and say, have a nice chat with you. And it, it's it, this is part of what I love about my particular art because I meet there, I make these connections and, and, and the way in which you work with people that commission you to do things or, or you just sit and, and sketch the house, it, you, you, you really do connect with people. Yeah, yeah, no, I can see the social side of it. You might even get a, a free cup of tea as well. You never know. Um, <laughs> you might, <just. laughs> Um Right, so now we're going to have a look at some of Jeff's previous works of art to give you a little bit of inspiration when he's got slightly longer than uh, 20 minutes uh, of time, um, just to see see some of the things that he's created. So what, what, have you, what have you selected for us, Jeff? I've selected it. I've got a bit of a selection here, John. So um, if... if... If um, if you look at this one, th this is this is exactly the kind of art that I really enjoy, because this was this was um, sketched on a beautiful sunny day, um, and and just looking at this sketch of, of if it's Cattle's Yard in Cambridge, which is quite a famous art collector, and it's now a museum, and there's a little church next to it, and I, I deliberately kept things very light because I wanted to create this kind of soft and warm effect around the the property. Um, but it, it, when I look at this picture, I immediately go back to that lovely day when I did it. And that's what being outdoors is for me is all about. And if I contrast that against something which is more a studio piece of work, you, you can perhaps see the, the difference um, that, that comes through. So with a studio piece of work, there's lots and lots of detail. There's, there's a, 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 a real clarity on all of the kind of individual bricks and reflections in the windows to try and capture the property um, and, and I don't know whether that's a nice way of showing you the difference in the two um, mm. what I was saying to you earlier is that, that sometimes you, you you get a photograph and, and just to give you a, another contrast I mean that's the photograph of that house okay so, yeah. I, so I don't know if it you know there's no light on it it's all in shadow you know and you're trying to create something which is um uh, which which is which is a, a, a visual representation of that house but you're doing it in a way that brings to life what the house would look like on a beautiful sunny day um but they're so not just houses i mean one of the things i love is is um is these cafes and i, I love to use color yeah and if you see great. some of my some of my, my recent work there's a lot of color involved and here i've used some soft focus effects so very much wet in wet and then i've painted over that with some with some dry painting, um, wet, wet on dry, to, to kind of get that two-tone effect, to try and just give this, this whole aura of, of, um, of a really warm, you know, lovely day in a cafe, you know, and, and that's what I'm trying to convey with, with this picture. Um, and Do you know you spell cafe it. wrong? No, no, I'm only... <laughs> <laughs> it's how they spell it, John. It's, it's, it's not the postcard. Um, and, and um, you know, I... I I'll show you this one as well. This is this is something in Cambridge, which yes. was kind of done half outdoors, half indoors. So I sketched this on location, and then came back and did some of the the, the, the work here. But is I've that, tried is that Trinity here. College by any chance? It's actually the it's actually the entrance to um to King's College. Kings, but, okay. Um, but Trinity's on my list to do next because Trinity is stunning. Yeah. And I just think things like putting the sky behind it that enables the the the, the building to look to just settle in its surroundings. So yeah. that's the kind of thing that I do. Um, yeah, no, that's lovely. Now, talking about colour, when you were talking about colour with the, the cafe, um, you showed uh, you showed me that um, truck that you did where you'd... Re there, that one's brilliant. Yeah, really went wild with the colour behind it. A really fantastic, 
explosion of colour and, and, and life in that, I think. And, and it, I, I can't describe to you how much fun this is. You know, it, yeah. it, when you start putting these colours on and seeing them start to merge and, and, and work together, I, I just love it. And, and, and I know it sounds really sad, but I'll sit there for an hour watching, you know, how these things come together. But I love these old trucks because this is my antidote to, to kind of to, to, to painting to painting buildings is sometimes picking up one of these old trucks and, and putting it into a setting like this, which is slightly abstract. But I love to splash the paint around and, you know, the, uh, and find these wet and wet techniques to, to play with. And we'll, we can discuss some of these techniques in the in the classes. But look at these lovely colours, you know, that it's just picking up picking up colours in your palette that you wouldn't normally use. Yeah, no, they, they look amazing. Thank you so much for sharing those with us. That, and it's, it's really good to get a bit of an insight into into what inspires you as well. And and let me know in the comments um, which painting stood out to you and why. Um, also, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're loving what we're doing today, we both really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up. YouTube then recommends this show to more people and helps us with our mission to inspire them to give art a try young and older like um now let's go back to jeff and we'll talk about he's been mentioning this upcoming workshop we'll talk about a bit about what he's actually going to be covering um you can if you want as i said earlier in this show you can use your own reference photo if you'd like because a lot of the things that he'll talk about can be applied to any house that you'll be doing but obviously we're going to be going through in a lot more detail um jeff what, what are you going to be covering in the in the workshop so in the longer workshop, we're going to, I'll, I'll show you a picture in a moment, which is the house that I'm, I'm planning on, on covering that workshop. But as John says, you know, you can use any, any house you want and, and, and I'll cover a lot of the, the techniques, but it'll be how we first look at either the, the, the photograph, photograph rather, um, how now, we interpret. Jeff, you're not the tinkering, are you? You're not tinkering on your. Um, oh, sorry. I thought. Wait, I thought wait a were... minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see. Don't... No, have you got? Have you got the? Have you got the painting of the workshop uh, thing that we're going to be doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, rushing ahead. Couldn't couldn't resist. Um, brilliant. Yeah. So we, we've got the we've got the reference photo that you'll obviously be sent uh, the day before. But we're at, in this one, we're actually going to be completing the whole painting. And so that will focus on the colour and the, it's slightly more complex as well because it's got a few things. But and why did you pick this particular reference? John, this is one of my favourite pictures, actually, that I've I've painted. And um, we all have our kind of the ones that for whatever reason we like the best and sometimes it's the way they look sometimes it's the way it makes you feel when you're doing it yeah but th this picture I, I just I just from the second I, I I started to work on this picture I just loved it um it, it's in a place called Pym Mill in Suffolk which is a very famous place for painters because um it, it's it's very near, very very near where Constable and some of the, the the old masters used to paint and it attracts a lot of painters in fact right next door to this house is a is a studio that sits there and does a lot of workshops and things. But but I just love this house. I, I love the dynamic shape of it. Um, I love the way it, it, it kind of looks at, at you in two different directions. I, I love the color. Um, I, I won't lie to you, the, the, the photograph is not is not this pink, but I really wanted to emphasize the pinkness of it because I, I thought it worked so well with the blue. Um, I love all this greenery, um, but, but it's, it's like anything. I mean, when you do something and you, you think about doing it again, you, you do it slightly differently. So so what we'll be doing is we'll be we'll be sketching this house. We'll be using techniques to sketch this house that you can use sketching any house. I'll talk to you about how to how to get the the angles correct or or, or how to 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 look for things about the character of the property and how to bring it to life. But what what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to bring a lot more of these soft focus techniques into this. I'm going to. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk to you about how to put this lovely blue sky on, but I'm going, to, I'm going to run this down very much wet in wet. So we get a kind of a, the house set amongst a, a lovely soft background. And if, if you're looking at painting your house or your friend's house, or, and that is a lovely setting. It's a lovely way of setting the house against, um, against a soft background. So that's what we're going to be doing. Brilliant. Um, and you've got some lovely light in here as well. You know, you've got some light coming across here and we'll talk about how to, how to bring light into a picture. 
yeah no i think it's gonna be a really useful workshop and it'll be I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it it's gonna be really fascinating and it's happening at the end of this month on tuesday the 28th of june at half past three in the afternoon uk time and as always spaces are limited so book soon to secure your place and you can either click the youtube pocket pop out link I almost uh, didn't say that uh, that should appear just here um, or you can visit our website shopkeeparty.com and I'll just share my screen now and show you how you can book and we'll do it as though it's on a on a mobile phone today so let's do that so you visit um, shopkeep arty and you click the little menu at the top and select the live events page and scroll down and you'll then come to Jeff's workshop almost missed it just there and click on the see details and that gives you all the the information and it also shows you the reference photos that will be sending you the day before so that you can print them off and have those in front of you and then to book the ticket you click this link here which will go through to Jeff's shop and you can either purchase the live webinar ticket or you can just purchase the video and the live webinar ticket if you purchase that um, you can either attend just the live webinar or you can have the live webinar and the video included at a, a discount than ordering um, both separately so you go to checkout and depending on where you are after checkout your local bank or card issuer will convert your the pounds to your local currency um, if you do purchase the video in the future head over to shopkeeparty.com, come to our video library, and this is where you can filter by artist, um, by medium even, things like that. So you can select uh, Jeff on the filter by artist, his name will be on there uh, when we've done the workshop. And um, this is then, it'll, it'll show you that, and you can look at the class info, have a look at some of the, the paintings that some people have shared on our Facebook page on there. Uh, and you can literally just press the blue watch button and watch uh, the video as many times as you want. So hopefully that helps. As a reminder, if you're one of our patrons, you automatically qualify for our workshop discount and you can simply use the link in the uh, chat now um, or use the patron discount link on our website live events page. Right, we'll go back. I know Jeff was eager to uh, continue. He was starting to fill out the tiles on the, on the roof. Uh, we'll go back and uh, we'll, we'll start adding a little bit more of that detail in the second half. Back with you, Jeff. Thanks, John. Okay, so let, what we're going to do now is so we're just going to, I'm, I'm just tidying up some of the, the smaller details and um, just things like putting these tiles in the roof, which I was doing. I'm very naughty. I shouldn't have been <laughs> doing that, but uh, um, I'm just putting some some of these in. I'm, I'm doing it really roughly because this, this is a nice draft sketch for for today. It just gives us a an idea um, that the, the, the tiles on the roof, but but I'm not doing every one you know, the way it looks. I'm just giving a, an indication as to what they look like. Um, which you can see on there. Francis has asked, do you use watercolour paper? And I think you did say, is, is it not paper? It is. It's cold press, not paper. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to use various different varieties, but I, I find I find that because I use an awful lot of wet techniques, um, the arch paper is the one that I tend to work on the most. And I find that I can make that very, very wet. And at the same time, I can it, it retains its shape. Because if my style is very much um, a loose sketching style, but I use a lot of watercolor technique to, to try and keep the authenticity of the picture correct, which means that I guess I'm kind of a, a blend of urban sort of techniques and, and watercolor techniques. So, so that's kind of what you can expect at the, at the, at the longer class. Um, but, but just to give you an idea, I mean, this is, um, that, that's now as, as, as far as I'm going to get to for, for the moment. But if you look at that versus the photograph, you can see it's it, it's, it's it's definitely that house, but it, but it's my artistic interpretation of that house. And the lines aren't necessarily straight, but in the scheme of things, does it convey that house? And I, 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 hope, I hope it does. Now, if you come on to paint that, um, what, you, what you might then do is it might then look like this. And the way in which I've painted this is, um, is, by, is by putting an initial layer of paint on underneath and then using a very tiny brush to, to put, put, pull out the bricks and the different shapes. And, and doesn't that, I hope you think that this rather flat light picture conveyed here is bright and it's cheerful. And you know, I, I hope it's brought the character out of the house, but at the same time, I hope it's 
I hope it's um, something that the owner of that house will be pleased to, to see, that it's, it's definitely their house, but a, a, a nice bright variation of it. Put some yeah. shadow on here of trees that are, that are overhanging, that kind of thing. No, I, I think that's a, that's a really good way to uh, illustrate how you can create the character in a house in, in that way. That's really lovely. Um, we've had a, uh, a message from Susie. So some time ago, I remember we've had we've had a number of different people doing art, these art short art classes in a, a, a number of different places, really bizarre places, you know, outside of a caravan in the middle of a caravan park or uh, things like that. And Susie said that she's just booked the workshop on her phone whilst at the spa. Didn't know she had it in her. Now, Susie, I mean, forget that. The po point is you're at the spa watching this short class. Are you are you painting along at the spa? Are you having your, your feet done while doing I don't know anyway um uh yeah mind boggles and uh she also said that she felt that the uh the truck was the fabist uh she really liked that painting and lenny said the truck with the explosion of color behind it was brilliant um carl also said that after seeing that old truck i'm hoping it can be used in a future workshop potentially okay. so yeah that's a good idea you, you might be able to see one just behind me actually i'll pull it oh over. yeah but there is a there's another version. Oh, of, sorry, um, I've just put it on the. Uh, overhead. Oh, okay, no problem. No problem. There's another version of a, of a similar kind of approach. So it, oh, it, brilliant. I, I can't describe to you how much fun it is. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, until until the moment that your wife realizes that you splash the walls with watercolor paint, but but that's a completely different subject. We've had a few of those episodes as well. <laughs> Feedback of people knocking over the ink onto the carpet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that, that was brilliant. Now you said you were going to potentially just add a little bit of. Yeah, so, so let's, if, if, you're, um, if, you're, if you're doing a, a rough sketch that you want to share with someone and say, this is what your house could look like. Um, th there's a number of things you can do. The first is you can, you can actually add by using these these shading pens, which are like a brush pen, you can just just add a bit more sort of texture to these houses just by bringing some of that. And see, with this one, all I've done is I've used these brush pens to bring out the, the a, a bit of the detail, a bit of the character, a bit of the light. But the other thing you can do is one of the things I've used today is I've used this this um, fountain pen, but it's actually filled with um, with with water based ink. So if I bring my water bowl over, what I can do is I can start to, to just use the brush to just tease out some of that ink. So I'm effectively now, this is a wonderful exercise. If you are learning painting or relatively new to it, um, or, or, or you want to just explore light, this is a wonderful way of doing it. Because what it does is it forces you just to look for the shadow and the light. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's just, it's, all it's doing is it's just teasing out. I'm gonna put some brick shapes in there. It's just teasing out some of the, some of the color. And as I run some water, just plain water, as I just run it across here, you can start to see, we'll color in one or two of the tiles, that this really adds a lovely, a lovely effect. Let's just run some water. I, think, I don't know. If that's is this coming across? On no, the... it is. It's, it's working really well. I think it's a, a brilliant idea. Genius. So you can just just bring that out and look at the look at the character that's coming out as, as this is starting to starting to come to life. Yeah, it's like a big thick line under there. And we can start to just pull. Just allow that. Just use the water. Let's just very gently use the water to just tease some of that ink out. And you get this beautiful effect that I, I have to say, I, I if you're outside and, and you can't carry, I said to John yesterday, I mean he, he was talking to me about you know how much how much material I, I I have and what my studio might look like. I mean to be fair, my studio has to fit into a backpack because it has to just go, you know, it has to, it has to be, it has to be movable. It has to be able to take me where I want it to take. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I, you know, travel all over the world, urban sketching and stuff, but I, I do love to get out um, and sketch things live. But you can see there, can you see how that's just 
all I'm doing is I'm very, very gently teasing out just, just the, the dark. You can pull up some ink from there and then just bring it into some of this. And this is re really, really easy, really, really lovely to do. It's just a, just got to be very gentle with the paint and allow the ink to, to find its own way. And you get some slightly, you can see here, I'm getting some slightly abstract effects, which you can, which you can play with. And again, what we'll do is we'll explore in the class how we do this with, with paint, how we, how we put some paint on and then how we just work it and work it and work it to, to bring out some of the, some of the aspects of the paint. There we go. There you go. So what do you think of that? That and wasn't that so quick as well? That's so effective, and that you're you're basically a monochrome presentation piece. It's lovely. Yep. Versus versus what it would um. Where is it? I can't find it. I think it's underneath your reference photo. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> See, that's the, the difference of the of the same house in a number of different. A different venue, a different um, styles, but again, that, that's the kind of thing we can we can have a play with. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. Um, Bobby says, does this water-based fine liner work if I wanted to do watercolor over it later? No, it won't. You, you'll what will happen is exactly what's happened here. It'll 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 disappear into the into the water. So you you'll really need to use a oops, one of these waterproof fine liners for that, um, or or use waterproof ink in your fountain pen, but. Um, but for this one, I particularly used a, a water-based ink that I, I knew would start to would start to um, move around once I once I've had, I had water to it. Yeah, it's a it, it's a great technique and it and so simple and you wouldn't really need much with yeah. you to do this, would you? One brush, no, it, no. <laughs> a water container, it's, and a pen. Yeah, that would be brilliant. It's not it's not a hard technique. It's just it just um, and I say well, once we get into the class, we can explore even more about how we. How we do that, and yeah. and if people are really interested in, in that, um, how to throw that water around and, and, and that kind of thing, then well, we can talk about that as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Really looking forward to it. Well, I I hope you've enjoyed it today. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how you got on at home as well. And as we near the end of this show, if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass on to Jeff, please write them down for me now in the Q and A. Also, Jeff and I'd love to see what you've created, as I just said, from the class. And the post relating to this show is already on Facebook. So um, go to Shopkeep Arty on Facebook, and you'll find the post there, and just share a photo of the painting that you do once you feel it's finished now jeff will have a look at all the sketches submitted and have a look at what other people have done as well give them a little thumbs up or a, a comment it's a really nice community thing that we've got going on um, now for our competition as well as sharing your art on facebook if you also book a place on the upcoming workshop um, you'll automatically be entered into our competition and Jeff will have a look at uh, through those particular paintings that are shared on the, our Facebook post and will choose a winner from the shared pictures and the winner will be asked to send us a photo of their house so that Jeff can then create a painted sketch of it. We might be able to do the big reveal of the finished work. I don't know whether we'll have the time to do it by the time we have the workshop. So hopefully we might be able to do a bit of a reveal there. Um, but either way, you'll then receive the signed painting. So uh, it's fantastic. So a big thank you uh, to Jeff for agreeing to do that. So thanks, Jeff. I'll now go back and I'll read out some of the comments that I've seen coming in uh, from this class. So um, Denise said, thank you so much. Uh, Joey said, love how loose it starts and how it finished uh, and how it finished at the end. Susie said, one of the uh, quink colours separates into blue and brown, which is fab. Thanks for today. Loved it. Now into the pool I go, she says at the spa. <laughs> So she hasn't been painting along. She did message earlier because uh, anyway, 
I, for, for obvious reasons, really, seeing as she was at the spa. And Carl said, thanks, Jeff and John. A brilliant expression of the building. I just signed up for the workshop. Well done, Carl. And Sally said, thank you, Jeff. Looking forward to the 28th of June. So um, brilliant. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, really, really great show today. Really enjoyed it. Doing a building, especially something that's more personal to you, like your own house or something like that, or your neighbours or something, you could. Uh, it's, it's quite a, a special painting. It's quite nice. Now, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel also be sure to click the notifications bell when you subscribe as I've been told it notifies you then when we actually launch a new video um, and it doesn't if you don't for some reason um, earlier on I mentioned that many of our artists have their own art shops on our platform uh, we not only set it up for you but you can start to make a good income from something you enjoy uh, some artists have made over £12,000 from their shop and this month we're offering a special 15% discount exclusively for our patrons to take advantage of so simply visit our website click on the art shops in the in the menu and you can find out more information on that page it's perfect for anyone who wants to display their art online from you know novices to pro and it, it can really grow with you um, as as you grow hassle free as well thanks again for joining us and until next time it's obviously goodbye from me but obviously thank you so much uh, for your time generosity it's been a really wonderful class today to jeff thank you jeff thank you very much it's been great to be part of it john brilliant and um as you've uh, been introduced to our art community as it's your first show you get a big round of applause <laughs> <laughs> uh so thank thanks. you <laughs> uh right and i'll finish on your sketch thank you so much jeff thanks very much john